Hey everybody, Rob Norton here once again, and once again I am with my brother John. Yep, 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 yep. yep. He is here, and uh, we are a dynamic duo of comic reviewers, and we have an interesting book here today. Um, I think it's got a great story and terrible art. I think it has great art and a terrible story. That is just ridiculous. How can we have <laughs> such opposing opinions? Well, that's not quite true. I think it's pretty genius both ways. That is Norton Man Art and Comics. This book, Bliss, this is John's title. This is the book my brother John here is. This is his book. Yep. Um, quick rundown. Like, I did my own book, black and white, all by myself. And I did five issues of my comic, Bliss, main character, her. Um, and then not really sure what I want to do after that. Um, and years ago... Um, Probably 2004, 2005, um, I participated in my very first 24-hour comic book day and where we, a bunch of us got together in a location and tried to draw a comic book, 24 pages in 24 hours. It's an endurance trial. It's fun. It's fun, but it's hard. It, it's hard. I think I only got through 22 pages, but I was trying to figure out a story to write um, and I had a character, this guy, Kyle, who I had basically have modeled off myself. A lot of his look, um, personality, interests, all sense that, of humor, sense of humor, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> At the time I had gone through a breakup and I was still processing my emotions. It was like one of my very first serious relationships and I was young, early twenties, you know, and it was, it was really hard for me. And I was able to put a lot of my feelings and emotions into this book. The 24 uh, hour. The 24 hour. Not this one. The story. So, like, we were, we didn't have the original art. It's horrible art kind of looking at it now because it's, again... It was a long time ago. It was ago. a long time ago. And as you progress through 24 hours, the art gets worse and worse. <laughs> you would burn out. Yeah, but a lot of the ideas and themes just really worked. And I don't think I composed it or thought it out beforehand. You know, I think I just did it all a lot on the spot. And a lot of people, and you can talk about after this, really talked to me about how they felt after it. Like the people who I worked with at the comic book store, they were scanning this art. And they're like, I got teary-eyed, John. I kind of cried. And I'm like, oh. oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, that's interesting. So, yeah. Um, years later, and years later, you kind of had an idea of wanting to reproduce the art and redraw it. So I remember, I can't remember the first time I read it, how long ago it was, um, but I do remember reading it and going, because you kind of framed the basic story in traditional comic book type adventure nonsense guy fighting vampires um monsters action shooting but the story of his inner thoughts are him relaying his feelings about the situation of the character here and that character there but you were giving your own personal real world kind of emotions filtered through there's these characters so it was the story was appropriate to the characters in the book but it carried a real weight like this is this is not some like Bullshit somebody just sat down and wrote just because he had to write a comic. This is somebody that had something to say. Right. And I remember, I, I like you were saying those others, I read it. And I was like, dude, you, you, wrote, a good, you wrote a good story. I, I, I've been trying to write good stories forever, and I don't think I ever have, but you <laughs> totally did. Yeah, and that's kind of a, what do they say, when every, like a perfect storm kind of thing at the time. Like, I've never written anything remotely like that. I've maybe, you know... People say tragedy breeds great art sometimes or yeah. whatever. You know, you go through heartbreak and stuff like that. That's where a lot of songs and music comes from and whatever. Will I ever go through something like that again to let me produce? I kind of hope not. But Nothing like that. But, yeah. you know, pain and suffering breeds growth and change. Mm -hmm. You know, a muscle doesn't get strong by just sitting idle. You have to work it and put it through some strain and stress to make it stronger. Not that people need to pursue pain, but that's where real, that's where you come up with ideas that resonate with other people. Mm -hmm. I read this and I had never been through anything like that at the time, 
but I still felt it. And then when I went through my own unfortunate divorce, even though the situations were different, the emotions of the character that he was thinking and speaking, I felt it. Yeah. So as you were saying, you had wrote that and drawn it. And again, I feel bad saying your artwork was terrible because I don't mean to sound douchey, but I understand it's years ago. It's 24 hour comics. But even if the art was not great, I think I thought the layouts actually all really worked. And yeah. so I presented you with the concept. I said, I don't mean to step on your toes, but I want to redraw that entire story, keeping your exact story and 90% of your layouts. There was one or two things I think needed to change just for the flow. Yeah, I wanted to keep your layouts and your words exactly. And if there's any changes in the words, you make it. But I wanted to draw it. And you eventually were like, let's do that. And that's what this book is. Yeah, I and I kind of was able to make it like, hey, let's just make it the next issue of my book. Timeline-wise, if you're reading my other stuff, it's like kind of doesn't make sense because it jumps into this like relationship that they have that was not established in the previous issues, and it's kind of like a time jump in the story. That doesn't matter. It's more like just a one-off issue. Um, so you did. I did the colors on this. I did, yes. I did them digitally. Still, I'm not a colorist. I'm actually very colorblind, but I, I tried my best. I did some weird uh, Procreate on my iPad thing with the flames. And I think it works. Yeah. It, and I can't color for nothing, so I it works for me. It, it's a lot of just like putting a flat color of the, 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 the skin, and then people might have better ways to do this, but then I use like a spray paint uh, airbrush... Uh, 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 Tool, tool uh, pen, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. brush, yeah, with just blacks and whites for the the shape. Yeah, it kind of works. But so my black and white line work with your colors on it. Yeah, uh, let's crack it open. Let me, uh, oops, let me center it. Um, so story by me, all art by Rob, with some mo the layout design mostly by me. Yeah, um, this doesn't really matter. This is just like previously A recap on the story. Um. The first two pages were not in the original comic because um, I only got to 22 pages and I tried to keep these to 24. So to keep it consistent, I made you draw two extra pages. And right. Yeah. Made you, made you draw some motorcycles. So. Oh, that was a pain, but worth it, I think. You added the text in the book, so I drew the motorcycle and all the backgrounds. Everything except the text. Yeah. That one was kind of a pain, but I, I think it works. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't hate it. Um, I got to preempt uh, saying this. Like, I know we were kind of joking in the beginning. Like I say, it's got good story and bad artwork. I was trying my best, but I still look at it as I do with so many things. I'm like, oh, there's, I was trying to do some things. And I think some things work, but there's some things I'm just like, I, I, I wish I would have done it better. But I, that's me on anything I ever draw. I, I think it, I think it works. And I, <laughs> I think you were also maybe like you had your own stuff to do. So I think you were not rushing this. But you know, you you were you you weren't like detailing everything. Like you didn't pull out, you know, real gun reference for that. I don't think. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I wanted to. I wanted it to look good because I was legitimately moved by your story, and I wanted to do as good as I could do to honor the idea that we were working on. And sometimes I think it works, and sometimes I just, as an artist, we were, you know, I yeah. feel like I could do better. Um, one thing I do in my books is I put a song, I put some song lyrics. Um, this is a Slipknot song that's, um, it's called Snuff. It's very, it's a very sad song that I thought was appropriate for this that I kind of put in the beginning and then the end a little bit. That was kind of one of the only additions I wanted to make right. for this. Because your original 24-page comic basically started with this. Your guy standing surrounded by vampire yeah. monsters. Very generic vampires. You definitely made them unique. <laughs> your, so you're saying your versions of the vampires were generic. I just tried to do something visually, different styles and looks and just something. Yeah. I, I'm still not super creative. But the thing that's great is, I mean, we're not going to read you the book, but this is his dialogue, his story, almost word for word from what you wrote however many years ago. Yeah. And I found it very, because this guy's got kind of like ironic, jokey sense of humor, and it works. I found myself kind of chuckling several <laughs> times. I found it very interesting. But this was your basic layout. I wish we did have the original ones that you had. Yeah. But I just took what you had and the basic idea and just kind of took it from there. Even this 
single image of a big monster's face and then the guns and the getting shot. Um, it was all fun trying to make it work, keeping your designs and your layouts, but add my spin to it. Yeah. Um, and you you added the backgrounds. I was not putting any kind of backgrounds on a 24-hour book. So I I don't even know where they were, like, setting-wise. You put them in, like, the outside with the... the it's a burning forest at night. Yeah. Easiest backgrounds in the world to I draw. Because the setting doesn't matter. Right. What he's doing really ultimately doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, the background, the, the settings doesn't, it's irrelevant, but we're here to hear his story and his thoughts. I added this in. I thought this was kind of funny. This Because you added this guy who's kind of flying. He's like, holy shit, is that one flying? That's new. Yeah, that's funny because it was not there before. Yeah. That's funny. A uh, quick side cap. I'm doing a, a new book that involves some monsters and stuff. And this particular vampire may cameo. Oh, I can't wait to get the royalties from that. I know, right? That'd be awesome. That's great. Um, so he's just kind of having his inner thoughts as he lays waste to vampires very easily. Um, I kind of liked this shot, this angle and the bullet hitting the guy. I kind of liked this face. I mean, the shadows and the stuff. I thought that came out yeah. kind of okay. And all this is still like consistent with my layouts. Yeah, you, you did know, it. Shooting forward, shooting at... Um, I don't remember what you had here, I, if it was a side shot. Uh, I, fuck, I can't remember. But I think I, yeah, I probably would have kept that because I was trying to stay as close to yours. And that just goes to show you're having a natural flow that was working. Mm -hmm. um, and then out of the flames, I kind of like the way that came out. I'm mostly-ish okay with that, but I kind of like this picture of the girl jumping. That's Bliss, the character. Right. The one th that he's thinking about. I think you changed up this a little bit. I think this was different. I don't think she landed... <sighs> As um, epically, what's the maybe like, dynamically a superhero landing? Yeah, and then but she lands, she joins the fray, jumps out, lands, and big splash page. I tried to really nail that one because it's the main star of your book, the main character. Mm -hmm. It's the hero shot, the hero shot. And I was playing with all these, I kind of like I did this like tree on fire, so I did this texture of this burning. Yeah, I kind of think it worked. Yeah, this is all cool down here. I like how he's kind of faded into the... Faded smoke. into the... Yeah, yeah, that was fun. And then I was using some reference for this girl. You know what? It's, it's kind of irrelevant. It makes me think of it right here. But there's another page later on. But there was this um, online Instagram model um, who had long, dark hair, stunningly beautiful. About a year ago, she killed herself. Yeah. And it... Really kind of like you just find out that happened and you're like, oh, God, somebody was she made a lot of money and was very beautiful. And but she was depressed and she took her own life. And I just not to make this a downer, but I remember kind of referencing her for some of these face shots. And um, she's not with us anymore. Mm. That aside, again, I was trying to make her look as beautiful as I could make a girl look. Um, she's got nose piercing and lip piercing. That's a specific character trait that you've got with her. Yeah. So that was hard. I've never drawn anything like that before. I'm like, how do I do it and not make it look strange? But I think it worked. Yeah, it works. Um, and here's where, like, the story kind of really, he starts talking about her and some of their backstories. And this is what she does. And then he's like, suddenly, like, I don't care about vampires. And, like, I'm really, like, can only think about her now that she's here. Yeah, everything previous to this was kind of, like, lighthearted him talking kind of funny in sh shit in his own head. Yeah. But she shows up and his focus has changed. And I buy it. There's a girl that's got your heart and she, whether she feels the same or not, but your focus has changed. Suddenly that's what you're thinking about. Yeah, if she's suddenly somewhere where you didn't expect her. Yep. Um, a little more action. I, um, I was really trying to do something with this bottom one and push like the perspective, the forced perspective. And it, I think it kind of worked. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my was just a straight on side shot. Uh, oh, Cause I didn't yeah. have the time or the patience to do something as cool as that. Yeah. I wanted to, I was really trying to nail this vinyl shiny leathery, um, boot, get the big heel there. Um, I was really pushing these action shots. I kind of like this head and this upper body and the punching fist at, Kind of worked, I think. Yeah. Um, I was trying to really make it look like she twisted his head around and snapped it with the folding flesh. This little image right here, I kind of like the way it came out with him kind of 
sketchily drawn in there with the fire behind him. And I mean, the text is like saying how he's like, I just can't focus on anything but her. And I just kind of like he's isolated in the the fire there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he just basically he's like, all I can do, I, I just want to do all these things. I just want to go over to her. I just want to say something. I want to hold her or do whatever, you know, and he just can't. And, I mean, you're saying, looking at her now, I know it's all those little things about her that made me love her in the first place. My first instinct is to go over there and kiss her and tell her all those good things that people want to hear. I'm like, yeah, if you've ever been, had feelings for somebody, even if it sounds kind of cliche to say, once you've been there and you feel that, especially for the first time, it all starts kind of making sense. Yeah. Kind of had fun drawing this face and that monster coming after him. Like, it's going to sneak up on him. Like, hey, dude, uh, don't get distracted. You're still fighting vampire monsters, buddy. Yeah. Dives over him. He has to duck under it. He loses his gun. So he has to rush over and get into his bag of tricks. A bigger gun as the monster jumps at him. Yeah. Um, I was specifically trying to do a, uh, from Aliens, Hicks. Oh, yeah. Alien jumping over him. He's ducking and rolling and shooting it as it goes over him. Yeah. Kind of a thing. And I, I tried to, I don't know, I don't think I quite nailed it, but he's, this is the grassy background. He's on his back and he's shooting up. But I don't know if it reads that way if you're not kind of paying attention. I do kind of, I enjoyed incorporating the white splatter effects to these exit points. It almost gives it a glow. Yeah. In a way with, I was, you know, get those uh, paints going in there and it's fun. It's kind of like a Sin City thing. In a way. Um, but even if like people, because sometimes you can see like maybe he's just jumping through the air and things are flying. But either way, yeah. it conveys the the idea like he blew away this thing. It, it, can, it communicates. Um, this is probably my least favorite drawing out of anything I did in here. I was trying to do too many things and I mixed them up and I don't like that face at all. Yeah. I don't mind. I think that's cool. I like that. That there. Again, heavily shadowed. I doing some designy stuff with a smaller border, but having the flame extend outside of the border. When I posted this drawing on Instagram, I had a couple girls say that they really liked that drawing, which mm -hmm. in a way you kind of get. It's like it's two people cuddling in a bed. They're like, I like that drawing. Yeah, um, yeah, and like at this point, he's just like again in his own head, and he just can't just thinking about her and all the shit that went down. Just me pouring my emotions and thoughts yes. onto the page and showing, and this is just him remembering stuff that they did. And this was kind of something specific that she always wanted. She always wanted to spoon mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. Um, and it's like, after a while, it's like, you kind of hate spoon. I'm like, I gotta move. I gotta get out. My but arm then, hurts. I, then at the time, like, oh God, what I wouldn't give to be able to do that. Anymore, right. You know? Yeah. And that's what you were saying in the text. And I get it. You say how I miss her. I miss how she wanted to take care of me when I was sick. I miss her late night calls when she couldn't sleep. I miss holding her when she cried during movies. And those are all things, you know. That you went through. You uh -huh. And I get it. You know, I have different things in my past relationships that you feel it. And that's why good writing and universal kind of thoughts and themes resonated, and especially when people have felt it. Mm -hmm. Um this specifically are some images where I use that Instagram model, her face as reference. Um, Cause you had these shots of her smiling and looking interesting while the guy is kind of going over his thoughts. Um, and this was supposed to be, I think when you originally did the art, you put like the choker that she was wearing. Oh, right, right. And right. I think I digitally took that out because I'm like, I didn't want it to seem like she was doing that in that moment in real life. That's a former. Like yeah. A memory yeah it's just like these are just his thoughts and like his memory like his feelings of her like not even a specific memory this is just how he remembers her at times right i remember her smiling and like these little things that guys and you know girls notice about someone that they were in love with just things they did yeah so that was fun to draw um there was something that you did and i don't know if you did it intentionally but i kind of grabbed onto it as an idea because he's going over his thoughts because he's remembering the good things. But then he started remembering a little bit how things kind of went when they went sour and how he started getting a little bit pessimistic. But I don't think I made it as clear as I should have here. But you can tell he's taken off his glasses. And for me, it's kind of like he's taking his – he's lowering his shields. Yeah. Drop the shields. Put your defensive down because now you can see into his eyes. 
and he's getting into kind of his emotions. He's he's sad, he's angry, he's all these things, but the glasses come off. Um, I'll tell you why I got that in a few pages. Okay. What, what kind of my idea was. But again, these were layouts that you did in your original book, and I'm, I liked, I like these long borders, uh, the long panels, and then the way that you had them there looking and it removes the glasses, and I, so I kept that basic layout. Yeah, I think the only thing you changed was like the um, the closeness of some of them. These were all basically the same size. Sure. These were all the same size. Yeah, just trying to vary it up. Yeah, no, that it definitely I think looks better. And he's got to get back into the the action. Um. Yeah, still going on. <laughs> I, this was in your book, right? The shirt. Um, no, I came up with that just. Okay. You're like, I need to put something on his t-shirt. And I'd be like, well, I always had this idea. I'm with stupid and an arrow pointing down to his dick. I, I, right? I think it's fucking I, I think it's hilarious. I think it, it was vote for Pedro. That was around the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I'm like, I don't need to bait it. You know, like, it still would have worked. Oh, that's right. Vote for, that's what it was. But I think that's I want a shirt that does that. I know, right? Um, I'll get fired from work immediately. Uh, but yeah, the action going on. Um he got really violent. I um I kind of enjoyed drawing this one. Yeah. I like that. This was this page I remember specifically doing like this was just letting all the rage out. Like he's thinking about all this stuff and he's just pissed off. He's sad, but he's also pissed off and he's just letting it out into this this monster. And I think I um was inspired by Sin City. Right, right. In there. Yeah. And yeah, that looks cool and I also I think I remember my original one was very similar and like it came out looking pretty well artistically, I thought. I again I wish we had those original pages, but <coughs> yeah, I, I I remember there'd be times where I'm like, your layout was perfect. I'm just gonna reproduce it in my way. I think that's also why you want to do it, because it, it took very little effort. You didn't have to think about it too much. Not too much. I wasn't coming from scratch. A lot of the work was done, so you could just kind of go with it. Um, I like how his hat flung off. Did you do that in your original one? Uh, I'm, I wonder if I got sick of drawing the hat. I, I don't remember. I know he didn't have the hat at one point. I, I can't remember, but I remember thinking, I'm sick of drawing this hat and I want to get rid of it. So it flings off. It makes sense and it gives him a little bit. He's, his hat's gone. His glasses are gone. So he's human. And um, when all that's over, you know, I hear her voice again and they walk up to each other. And I believe this was all your original layouts. They're looking at each other. I tried to convey some kind of emotion in their faces, and they embrace. You know what's hard to draw? People kissing. People kissing. The fucking faces mashed together. Mm -hmm. You have to have one slightly have like angled away. Right. It's hard. Yeah. And I, th I feel like I could have done this better, but I think the idea works out. They see each other silently. She just comes to him, kisses, and she says to him what he wants to hear. And through the book, it's all his internal dialogue. I don't think there's any outwardly spoken No verbal, uh, verbal except that. That's the only time something is spoken out loud. Yeah. Except that was just him imagining it happening. Yeah. That's, which, that shit only happens in the movies. That shit only happens in the movies. Nope. It only happens in the movies. And... Um, I can't speak for women. I think it's true. But I know as a guy, there is not one of you assholes out there that haven't had that same thought. There's someone that you're super into and you imagined it all going exactly right. In your head, you're just like, wouldn't that be great if? Yeah. But it only happened. And so we've repeated the scene to kind of make a visual connection to where she's walking up to him like we did over here. It's, it, actually, I just copy pasted the panel. Yeah. But she's walking up to him. But she's not coming up to kiss him. And so now that they're done fighting the monsters, the hat and the glasses go back on. Shields up. It's like his his walls are back up is how I read it. Yeah. I think in the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie, there's the funeral scene where they're in the rain and stuff yeah. like that. He takes his glasses off because he did that with Elektra. You know, so he could she could see his eyes, you know. But right. There's a point where she, like... And she, he was seeing her in the water and stuff, but yeah. then she put the, 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 the umbrella up, and he just, like, she walks off. He puts his glasses back on. You know, that's kind of, I think, the idea that yeah. I had at the time, and it works in this very yeah. similar way. I don't know if you knew in the context of that. She knows that he took his glasses off so he could see her, yeah. and so she intentionally put that umbrella up to hide her so he couldn't see her, and he's pissed. 
in a movie that's kind of okay, that was actually a brilliant little scene. Yeah. And so the text from his inner thoughts go on about how they discuss about what they're doing and what's going on. Um, he's kind of back to acting tough. Shields are up. He's like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. This doesn't bother me anymore. Um, and again, I'm not trying to speak over you. Um, I just like, we say our goodbyes and she leaves. I feel like shit because I feel things that are worse. Things are worse off than they ever before. He just kind of throws in there. God, she smells good. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. Like you're trying to act like you don't, like you don't need it. You're fine. Yeah. And he goes like, you know, who needs them? Women, girls, like I'm better off. Anyway. I'm probably better off. And then, no, that's horse shit. He's alone and he sits and, I mean, he could be crying. I don't know if he is, but he's feeling the pain. And I remember that ending on that book caught me off guard because he's tough. And I'm mean, like, he could have been just riding the motorcycle off into the, into the sunset. Yeah. He sits down and he's he's having a little, our tough hero is having a little bit of a breakdown. You got your music. Yeah. I, I don't, looking at it now, I don't know. Like, I wanted to put the music in because I kind of had a running theme from the other books and I felt this was the only place. Maybe the music wouldn't help or just the silent image alone without the dialogue would have been better. I, I don't know, but yeah. it is what it is at this point, you know. But, but that, that's the end of that. And, yeah, that, I did it just an interior back cover. That, Threw in an image there. Looks great. I, I kind of like that it's a reverse of the cover. Oh, did it. you do that intentionally? I want to say yes. Just say yes, because like, it like makes a, you sound like it was totally planned. Yeah. That didn't even occur to me, but you're right. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have more books. Um, this was just kind of a... I didn't plan on having this as an issue, but you want to do it. I thought it was a great idea. Save me some time. Because I think I was working on helping you with your He-Man stuff. Right. So, like... Yeah, if you want to do this so I can have another book going out. Gives you some time. Yeah. I had a lot of fun doing it. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I kept meaning to bring it up, and then I eventually did. I don't think that you had any kind of a delay or hesitation when I first brought it up. No. I mean, and I brought it up to my then-girlfriend, now wife, and she's like, no, you need like if you're, you need to redraw that. But I've never been someone who ever has wanted to redraw my stuff. <laughs> and I want to redraw my shit all the time. I know. So I was like... If Robert wants to do that, like, I'm not insulted or anything like that, and I think it would be cool. And, like, I agree, like, there's a lot of great layouts, and the art could be better. I could see, like, myself enjoying doing the same thing, but right. I was like, yeah, if you want to do that, that's great. And it's still your story. It's your book, your characters. Um, it was a fun collaboration for me. Yeah. And um, we've done a few things like that. We've collaborated on the He-Man book and done some artwork together, but this was a fun one, and I'm, I'm glad I got to do it. Um, yeah, so maybe you can... If anybody wants to read the book or find other issues, you can, I don't know, DM you on this channel. Or, oh yeah, there's... Instagram right there, Norton Man Art. Uh, that's him. And Instagram for me is Norton12013. You can find us easily there. Uh, message us here. And um, if you want to read the books, get copies of them or tell them that we're awesome or tell us that we suck. Yeah. I want to hear it all. Or if you're a colorist who wants to work for free. Good Lord, hook us up. <laughs> Maybe not in for free, but really cheap. Yeah. But yeah, it was that was fun to revisit this. Uh, you know, good to sit down and talk about it with you. It's something I wanted to do, especially now that I've started doing these videos. This was a good one for us to look at together. Yeah. But it's uh, getting on in time, and I'm sure people are sick of hearing us talk. So Probably. Ended there. Yep, we're done for the day. So that's everything. Thanks for everyone for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Yep.